everyone, and welcome to another lifting episode. Uh, uh, today's show was uh, recorded on 9-30-23. We're here with our friends Allison and Jason from Australia again. Say hello, guys. Hey. Hi. Hello, everyone. Yeah. And actually in Australia, it is currently the 1st of October, I believe, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, so it's being filmed on both days. So, yeah. So, uh, I just heard, I heard uh, uh, Isaac mimicking that scene from Marvel going, time travel. So, okay. So, yeah, I just heard that uh, when Hulk goes, time travel. Yeah, he was doing that in my head. So, yeah. So, with this... Um, uh, I am actually opening the circle to true benevolence with no conflicting agendas. So, uh, Joanna, before we begin. So, uh, before I uh, say the love one prayer, I find this interesting because this is kind of something where the Sasquatch are the ones that are requesting this particular show. And it ought to be interesting because, again, Allison and Jason being over in Australia, I think it will be really interesting uh, for everyone as well to find out what are the thoughts about all of this or what's going on in Australia, just like we have Sasquatch or some people say Bigfoot, uh, forest people in the, the United States to give give a look around to see what's going on in, in Australia. So um, we're all just impromptu kind of doing this with the forest people, but I think hopefully you find it a very interesting show, everybody. So with that, we'll open this up. Mm. We are all one. And when one is harmed, all are harmed. When one is helped, all are helped. Therefore, in the name of who I am, and I am one with all there is, that only the highest good be done. We pray for you, your friends, your family, your loved one, to let healing energies in. Let them love you, let them nourish you, and let them bring you to your highest good. We ask for benevolence to come in now. Benevolence with no conflicting agenda that will assist and allow for this conversation to be had freely and well understood by everyone who is listening. We also want everyone to be supported by benevolence right now. So be it friends, guides, past family members, anyone now listening to come in and join and to lift the energies and to allow for this conversation to happen freely. We ask for malevolence and or mischievous beings who would maybe want to interfere with this conversation to just be gently swept away. And so this uh, conversation can be had and the good spirits that is mean for. And again, always blessings to everyone out there. So with that and with everyone's agreement, we just say, so be it. So be it. So be it. Yeah. And that tends to clear uh, clear the negative energies, and it tends to set the foundation for the rest of the show. We do that yeah, psychic that, prayers yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It tends to mirror back anything that any junk that comes uh, our way. So uh, perfect in that way. So the the reason uh, that I chose this uh, this uh, title here is called "The Truth of the Forest People," is because there is a uh, a topic that uh, they wanted to they wanted to bring to light and i'll read the channeling they did as the uh as the last uh, uh affirmation and blessing for the end of the show uh to keep it there and i'll even put it in the description underneath the show as well uh but this uh this is actually quite interesting they the main message they wanted this time and i believe this was also on galactic interstellar council and cmar and them uh, came through and talked uh, they briefly touched on this but i think they wanted this to be more of a public uh, open more open public uh, conversation about how there are many people recently and i'll give a rundown of what what uh, how people communicate with them they go out in the woods they look for like say the tree structures or the uh, or like the broken limbs or they look for footprints usually that's usually the thing uh, they, uh, you know with the big foot type of thing uh, they they don't particularly like that word though they they absolutely hate it actually because uh, it was like well do you have do we have big feet yes do you you know they always uh, they, they some of them are snarky when they come back like that but what happens is recently there have been more and more people very interested in in the forest people which they're all for but on the flip side of this argument it has bred a generation of people thinking that the, since they are quantumly based beings or at least the anakam line or the elder line uh they think that uh, they uh, can call on them for pretty much every problem like praying to angels or praying to god or gods or something like that 
And it's gotten to the point where the forest people wanted to say something about this because uh, uh, it, it's not that they don't help humans. They've helped children. They've helped people a, lo a, a lot. But in the interim, uh, also other beings were saying this too. You know, we're not we're not saviors. We're not angels. We're not. You know, well, you your idea of guides is incorrect. We're not. Uh, mm. there, there are really no beings assigned to you in that particular way, or we're not beholden to, to people in that particular way. And this actually came about fairly, I don't want to say suddenly they were building towards this, but then all of a sudden we met this um, forest person when we when we got here. We had a, a name, uh, Vitos, he calls himself. And uh, when we first got here, the, the forest people we communicated with in Arizona and the tribe we normally associated with uh, they uh, they came through and said they would put kind of like an all points bulletin kind of thing out for us for the the uh, the forest people in this area and show them that uh, uh, who we were so we could continue on communicating and they uh, they wanted a communication arc to construct what that is it's usually a a uh, visage of some sort in the center with a couple of copper pipes on the tower buster formula in a stand. And uh, in this case, they wanted three different kinds of forest people displayed, and they wanted a triple thread uh, uh, communications arc instead of two. They wanted three because it was easier for them to use a, a triple uh, one than a, than a double one. And they apparently wanted the strongest one on the property, too. So this is, uh, I was like, okay, I have no problem doing this. You know, they wanted their own images. You know, they had a friend of mine get some statues of them. And all that I molded them, got them, had them molded and made the organ pieces and whatnot. But uh, what uh, the point they're trying, the point they really want to make is in all the communications they have with people, they're well, people are welcome to make contact with either the Elder Anakam line or even the regular forest people. They encounter that are more like on par with us. You know, you have the the spacefaring ones that had come from the Pleiades and came down came down here and uh, eventually became the uh, elder line during the Lemurian Atlantean period to what the the current Forest People or Sasquatch people are now. And uh, there's still the elder line. There's some that are hundreds of years old. There's even a couple. Uh, oh, there's several elders out there that are thousands of years old. That's the Anakam, original Anakam line uh, from the Lemurian Atlantean period. And uh, they uh, they wanted uh, the, these, the in-between ones, like the ones, not the extreme elders, but the ones in between the young and the extreme old, wanted people to to know that they are, they, they pour violence towards them, of course, you know, like guns, knives, all this other stuff, but they also don't want people to get the idea that there's some kind of angelic force. There's false channelings about them right now as well, they said, uh, that people see them as this extremely omnipotent, powerful, you know, preolithic, you know, type of, you know, badass uh, type of one of uh, being that can't be harmed by, you know, some of the negative forces like Draco reptilians and Orions and things of that nature. And they want to say that, uh, okay, the one of them saying, Badass, you can keep that one. Okay, mm -hmm. so okay, so I just heard that one. They said, other than that, we're not omnipotent. We're like you. We just age slower. So it's like, uh, okay, that's actually fair. And uh, just like we knew Fuma, Simar, Sufas, Mirak, and Morak back in uh, back in Arizona, and uh, here we know uh, Vitos and Waylon. One is known. Uh, he called himself here too. We know two here, and uh, and. Uh, uh, Prylan, a Prylan, Pylan. I can't remember the the name of the the female one. I'm sorry if I got that wrong. I'm probably butchering it. But, uh, but yeah, they uh, they have been fairly adamant that, um, also that this is something we also found out in Arizona. Yes, some of the forest people there gave us permission to use certain materials like Sedona dirt, crystals, things of that nature. But there are also other beings too that might object to certain things being used or taken. And they are one being of many. They are not like the stewards of, of an area. They are a people, you know, uh, basically like basically an uh, uh, instrument in a choir of, of music, basically. They are not like the overarching, you know, people that have esoteric wisdom type of thing. 
Uh, that's the kind of thing. They, they, they have wisdom of the earth, wisdom of certain things. Their elders definitely have knowledge from the histories that have been forgotten. Yes. Lyrans uh, also have the same gr grievance, I came to find out. And both of these races are hunted mercilessly, along with some of the dogmen, by, by Cabal military as well. And they don't want to put themselves at risk uh, by doing an over amount of channeling or an over amount of communication so people get butthurt that they're not around. This is why people presume that they're immortal. They're not. They just age slower. This is why they wanted the communication arc so that they could communicate through their own visage. They can communicate through that. And and also, they said there are products out there right now uh, that uh, don't depict them correctly, that they're... Uh, they have some have like rainbow looking stuff or you know, fairy like stuff or something like that. And they're they're uh, It's not that they don't have a sense of humor. They're just in sense. They want to be able to connect properly with people. And it's not like mm. people can't do artwork or anything like that. It's like that scene in Harry and the Hendersons where you see those different pictures where the artist was, was doing different pictures. Of them, and then Harry picks up, uh, a picture of one that looked nasty that was not uh, like that he was incensed by it that's the reaction they actually have to stuff like that that was depicted absolutely 100 percent correct right there so uh so the, the writers of that movie were dead on so this is something they wanted to, they want to fix there's also another group out there that is associated with unicorns they are a different elemental type type group they get sick of all the the unicorn misusage of the imagery and stuff like that. They get butt hurt over that, so because uh, they get depicted as like unicorn farts and all that other stuff. They don't. They hate it. They hate it. So it's like uh, like I don't blame you. I would hate it too. I found out they are uh, an elemental uh, human like species that was genetically created by another species called the Ferbosi around the Atlantean period and that actually had the unicorn horn. And they they applied certain DNAs together to have a helper. That helper ended up becoming a sentient species, by which then Poseidon at the time took the DNA to create, try to create the horse DNA. He took sent their type of centaur, so he took centaur DNA, and he ended up creating the unicorn to be able to create the horse for Athena in the mythology. He created the giraffe, zebra, all those things. Um, so they wanted to, uh, that particular race wanted to be depicted correctly. The forest people are the same way. They, you know, when I was making some of the products that had their images on, I said, okay, what don't you want in this? They're like, you're fine. Just don't add the, the colory stuff or the glittery stuff or something like that. You know, he goes, give that to the fairies. We don't give a crap. So it's like, okay. So uh, they said, they want this. They can have it. We don't, we don't, we don't particularly care for it. I'm like, okay, that's, that's fine by me. So they want like basic, their basic look. They want, they want the, uh, uh, they basically look like us, just with a lot of hair. They have sometimes uh, they look like some of our different races. Sometimes there's a hybridized between human and forest person, and they have kind of the curled curled hair as well. I've seen those. The, and all around the world, there are the different types. Like uh, Australia has the Yowie, for instance. Uh, the only said they said the only one different from theirs, and this will surprise people, is the Yeti. Uh, they said the Yeti is a nasty reptilian species. They are not. A member of the Anakam lines or the forest people lines at all, uh, like depicted, you know, guarding temples like in uh, Mummy, the uh, Mummy Three, the uh, the Emperor's Tomb, like for instance, had the the, the Yeti guarding uh, Shambhala, you know, and stuff like that. Um, they said the Yeti is a nasty reptilian variant that grew hair, uh, grew white hair, and there are white haired uh, forest people that are like how we have elderly people that have. We get white hair after a while, but there is a difference. People have associated the white with with uh, uh, with uh, and Yeti with uh, elderly Sasquatch, and think more white reptilian like how the white Draco are, but mm -hmm. underneath is more of a grayish whitish skin that's underneath there as well. Kind of like polar bears have the black skin under it with the white hair. They kind of have that with a grayish, blackish, bluish tint underneath that. So there was a case years ago where somebody in the Himalayas saw this, thought they saw a big man in a coat, and they got a little closer, saw this being had a fire. This being turned around was a reptilian, looked uh, had a larger 
you know, with like the like the crocodilian type of teeth, they ended up shooting this this creature, and they sh- they shaved the body afterwards and found out it was a reptile, but uh, yeah. but uh, that had adapted to freezing cold conditions, and it was not cold blooded; it was warm blooded. So with this, they're saying there is a major difference here. Like the beings they say are around Mount Shasta, oh, yet he's sighted there. Yeah, because it's guarding. They were those were particularly those were genetically engineered reptile Draco like variants that were guarding alien strongholds and stuff like that or uh, around military facilities and stuff like that. Those were more genetic mutants. Uh, so they wanted to make sure the difference was, was actually seen there. Oh, I'm getting the thumbs up for that, for that particular one. I knew that needed to be said. Uh, Vitos himself didn't actually say mention that, but they're giving me the thumbs up on that. So, uh, but yeah, it uh, to give a rundown to anybody that hasn't seen any of our forest people, type shows before like world of sasquatch which we are bringing back i i will say we are bringing that one back because there's been a loud request from them to bring back world of sasquatch the over resounding yes to that so uh not heard from the dogmen or the cat people for the other variant shows but but the the uh forest people they are always associated with different hominids on uh, on the earth have some types hybrid together yes are they associated with gigantopithecus no they are more from the from the Pleiades, and they came in in earlier human histories along with uh, other galactic groups that existed millions of years ago here. So uh, people think prehistory, everybody is just uh, uh, running around dragging a club and uh, clubbing uh, uh, dinosaurs and stuff like that. No, uh, there were giants. There were ones that could uh, grow and shrink, kind of like you see in the cartoon series is that out, out there, like you see like, like uh, in DC, they had Gigantor and Apache Chief, where they could grow and, and shrink. Then you had uh, the forest people that were considered to be giants, but they were a, more of a solid form. You had some of them, and then you had the earlier ones that could slightly morph and had high have high telepathy skills. And you also have they wanted me to differentiate where you see them getting inside of an orb. Sometimes you'll see them quantumly kind of getting inside of an orb. Sometimes in films. That's actually a small spaceship they're jumping into that is actually more of a, it's like the TARDIS on Doctor Who where it's, uh, where it's bigger on the inside, where they just, they transport into it, but it's an actually a ship with a crew and everything. So Ooh, that's okay. what some of these orbs are. And it's a commonly used type of technology. It's the bigger on the inside type of technology, like the TARDIS, very commonly used out there in the galactic realms. So people try to associate with one species. You can't do it because a lot of them trade like the different gray species. There was one in Yosemite, for instance, that a guy caught some grays out there one time, leaned against the rock and fell into it and found grays messing around in a lab. And it was a holographic space they had dug out for themselves. They caught him, abducted him, tried to wipe his memory. It didn't quite take because they were in a hurry. And then he went back to that same rock, couldn't put his hand through it because they took a holographic like box and shoved it into a space moved set the me- physical matter aside and had a space for themselves in there and it's a frequencies thing where you can move the space around as well they then they moved it this is how what some of those forest people are uh, are doing versus transforming can some of the extremely older ones do that yeah uh, uh there are there elemental forms that can turn into orbs yes but the majority of them people are seeing are little spaceships so uh and elemental fairy like forms as well so they wanted me to differentiate that. And they're not all elemental. People always say, oh, they're an elemental. They're a hairy fairy. And he's like, eh, I could hear them saying, eh, uh, fairies are slightly different. We're closer to you guys. Uh, so uh, some might use that as a badge of honor, but this group here is one eh, with that designation. So uh, they have nothing against fairies, but they are saying that they're more like us. The elemental forms are an amalgam between different elemental forces like earth, air, fire, water, or metal, or different amalgams of different elements together. Usually two that form a life form or some kind of dryadic form like a tree, like tree beard or or something like that. So people have associated the two groups together. Where, yes, forest people are associated with the elements because they're always outside, but they're closer to us in physiology. Uh, it's just they live longer. So uh, that and there, some of our toxins irk them more than it does us because we're more used to it. So that's the kind of stuff they wanted me to 
get out in this in this particular show. And I will be reposting all the World of Sasquatch episodes that we've ever done to galacticinterstellarcouncil.com and lifting.net here very soon. And then we're going to rekindle that show as well. So I think we're at a good place uh, where you can actually, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to be that long winded, but that's the stuff they wanted me to get out. But uh, yeah. no, no. Before we bring them through. No, 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 I mean, they, they, they have to talk to you. Yeah, yes, I don't. <laughs> I am curious in the Australia side of the world, what are talked about there is kind of the forest type people. Well, we haven't really, not from our knowledge, have we actually spoken with any of um, the Yowie or the forest type people here. Mm, or, cottage. or, oh, there was Lawman. Yeah. That was in the cottage that, um, just Jason used to live in a, a, a cottage and that had a lot of foresty area. And there was, and he was a Narcan though. The best mm. looks are to be um, Bigfoot or, yeah. Not Bigfoot. They don't like Bigfoot. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I just saw I just saw Vitor doing this to you. So it's like, <laughs> uh, so it's like uh, he's messing with you. But yeah, they generally don't like that. They see that as more yeah, of a slur, so, but they don't. Uh, it's fine, you know. So yeah, so uh, we so we did a, a session with, with you, Chris. Uh, this is going back years ago now, and you said that there was a um, his name was Lawman, and he was. Um, long hair blonde blonde long blonde long hair and he was really beautiful positive energy and he was always around us for quite a while yeah jason used to say see him kind of take like us as little children to go and kind of play or experience experience stuff when we were living at the cottage so that was one that we had encountered yeah but he but let's just say it wasn't physical no <laughs> just to let everybody know <laughs> yeah. um yeah. but with the history so, like I said, we didn't, we, besides the lawman, we haven't really encountered many forest beings. So I had to actually research the history. And I felt that it was really good history if I went back to more of the ancient people, like the Aboriginal people that have experienced or have mm. thought that they witnessed um, a Yowie, what they called Yowie here. And there were, I've got stuff written down, and they do have a description in the, there was a book published by John Pinkerton and they, in the description, they said that there, there were these beings that were flat nosed and they can explain if this is true or not. Flat nosed with wide nostrils, thick eyebrows with sunken eyes. Their mouths were prodigious width with thick lips and prominent jaws. And the Aboriginal people would call them either Yahoos or Yowies meaning hairy people. So that's the information that we got. And then in northern Queensland, the Aboriginal um, clans believed that they would actually, they coexisted with these people that were either man-like or ape-like with long hair. However, in that region of northern Queensland, there was history or stories of the Aboriginal people being attacked by these Yowie groups. So I don't know how true that is either. And they said this, there were two different types of Yowies. There was one called Gagan, Gagantuscus, something. I'm not, I don't think I'm pronouncing this properly, Gagantopicus. Oh, Gagantopithecus. Yeah, Gagantopithecus as well. That's how you pronounce yeah, that. that's yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and they said that there was between 10 to 6, 6 to 10 feet tall, ape-like men with talons for fingers. And then... And they compare that to the American Sasquatch, but then there was also a, another grouping that were more of a four to five feet tall. So that's what the history is for from the, the Aboriginal history that there were these two different groups. And then there's, um, I don't know how true that is, so it'll be really interesting to know if that's actually true from what they have specified. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what uh, I I got a, a nod yes on some of it. You know, with the Gigantopithecus, that was supposed to be more of a prolific uh, type of ape species. I'm thinking uh, some of the descendants of the Gigantopithecus and some of the descendants of the Anakam lions actually merged at some point. Oh, is what you're saying? They weren't the same people, but they there were variants that were created after a while. Okay, uh, the um, somewhat you're saying there were some weird variations. Uh, uh, 
Oh, yeah, they're also specifying the one in Indonesia, the Orang Pendek, that's there. They said that one's insane. That's not actually one of their uh, one of their people. That's more along the lines of face eater or troll, which that's uh, that's out in the Appalachian Mountains, where along where we are near in Virginia, North Carolina. That one was more like a baboon and is controlled by aliens and they're extremely barbaric. But the but the the Yowie lines, the actual Yowie lines, uh descend like the the forest people seen in California and Arizona. And up to Vancouver Island, you know, uh, all the way up in Canada and and Washington and Oregon. These are all Lemurian descent lineages. Like this is why mm-hmm. some of them have the Samoan look, you know, like they have the 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 wider neck. They kind of look like they would be Hawaiian person or something like that. These were from Mu slash Lemuria descent lineage, and uh, some of them were also on the Lemurian Council in the day and age with like some cat species and also the more Hawaiian looking people and also became Mayan descent lineages and also the uh, some of the Native American tribes along the and Polynesians on the other side. So when Lemuria, uh, parts of it sunk and parts of it moved into a dimensional space, they went to both sides of that same thing would happen with dogmen that were over in Atlantis where they they went to all all angles and sides as well. From there, that's why you see some of the uh, werewolf myths and stuff happen along the the edge of where Atlantis used to be, like Hyperborea over into Transylvania, Romania, you know, and also the Scandinavian countries and whatnot over there. And they forced the top of the world. But over here, it's the same effect with forest people, uh, where they went to other areas that may have been have been uh, Mu or Lemurian outposts, like like uh, Australia is, because uh, you have the you have the Micronesian nations over here uh, that uh, and also that mysterious area called Non Madal, which was a uh, Lemurian uh, or Mu like naval center where you hear them talk about. That's the outer edge of Mu, which was right there. And then you have Australia and Japan that were connected to it as well, that were right there. So yeah, there were some that escaped some of these lines that escaped, just like with Atlantis. There were other lines that escaped uh, uh, from Atlantis. And they merged with some of the uh, other less advanced people as well. The same thing happened with some of the Anakam lines over here on uh, the Lemurian side. So it, uh, that's what happened. That's where you get the fusion of different DNA. I just got the thumbs up with that. So that uh, I was doing that a bit. I, I had knowledge, historical knowledge, but I was adding intuitive uh, bits of that as well to try to to translate that. And they're saying I have that correct. So uh but yeah, yeah, that uh, the 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 one you were talking about is true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's been some. There's also been the history of more, more recent sightings, and I do get a feeling that they don't really, they don't really want to bother people, and they don't really want to be bothered by people because some of the his, some of the recordings here is in 2016, a bushwalker in Darling Downs Mountain Ranges near Toowoomba. Uh, said that she saw what could be a Yowie person and was just sitting in the long grass and didn't want a bar of her, just was like, I just got the image of this being sitting in the long grass and just doing its thing. Didn't want to didn't want to take notice, didn't want any interaction. It was just being what it was being. And then and there was also a video footage. Apparently there was video footage in Ipswich of an Ipswich Yowie in 2019 on a YouTube video where a man was just trying to video take video footage of a large flock of cockatoos, and apparently there's video footage of that as well. And then there's also a sighting that was just more, more recent of an auburn head creature that was sitting beside a, a dead kangaroo. I mean, I know everyone has to eat, so... Mm-hmm. But I get the feeling that they just don't really want to be bothered by people. They just want to go around and live their life through their day, pretty much. Yeah, that's kind of what I, that's some also some of the descendant lineages you're seeing too. Some that talk in symbols and signs and leave uh, like dead animals and stuff as gifts or like leave rocks and stones and stuff like that. The Anakam elder types will as well to an extent, you know, with the gifts and everything. But the ones you're seeing, you know, next to the like the dead kangaroo and such, those are the tribal ones that are living out in the bush uh, as well. Uh, they will do that. Oh, what? Oh, even you guys do that. OK, uh, I thought the, that you guys, since you had tech, uh, you still have tribal roots, so you'll still do hunting and all that. OK, I was wondering if there was a separation there of the more tribal and the more 
uh, more tech advanced, and apparently not. So, uh, so with that, I was just corrected on that one. Uh, I mean, he, he uh, Vitos was pretty quick to correct me on that, but uh, but yeah, the one that was spotted next to the dead kangaroo. That would be. Would that be more of a tribal one that would uh, do mind speak, or is that one more symbol speak or an element of the two? Mind speak. Uh, uh, not all of them can mind speak. Some of them speak in the whoops in their own language and stuff like that. And then you have the ones that do telepathy. It's just like with humans. Can all of you? You all of you know how to use telepathy on an advanced level? No. It's kind of like using the force for a Jedi. Not everybody was that. It's the same kind of difference. Uh, so. Uh, uh, so he's basically saying some of us would appear almost godly to some of them, too, because of the energy frequency differential or the advancement, kind of like how one of us would appear strange to a caveman. So it's uh, like we would see, be seen as gods to a caveman, like some of the ETs were to like Neanderthal and Cro-Magnon Man and all them. So and some of the other hominids like like uh, like uh, Australopithecine and uh, Denizenovans, all those types. So it was like. Uh, and so what are you trying to say, Lighthouse? Um mm. Oh no, I had it I had that uh you were quick to correct me on the other one. I thought he was gonna correct me again. But yeah, you've had it you've had that correct uh so far, though with the sightings, some of them just want to be left alone, some of them actually hide from us, and some of them, like some of the other ET and Agarthan groups, have had a it's a separation of the densities type of situation where some groups evolved more. Then others kind of like the Tartarian groups or anything. We talked about this where they chose to just not circle the toilet with the rest of us and they went into a different place to wait to kind of rejoin us. And they're more associated like the the Harry Potter wizarding world where you had the different like magical groups and you had the regular human. It's kind of like that with with these guys too, and these guys associate with that. They're called the Tartarian world unity. We can go into that in a different one. But this uh but with these guys, it's the same thing where some of them have just kind of separate over here and they're doing their thing and then when people are ready to communicate they want a more meaningful unified conversation not that they want to be saviors not that they want to be demonized a very famous case of them being called demons would be more like by the vikings i hate to bash the vikings but eric the red and leif erickson sent out scouts when they first uh, came to north america and they sent out scouts and they said there were forest demons uh living uh, you know with the glowing red eyes and stuff like that hairy men uh, they said they didn't want to, they, didn't, they weren't going to mess with them. They said very similar in physique to ourselves, but we're like, no, you know, some of them had some of the Scandinavian genes as well because of Atlantis. Some of them had similar languages. Uh, the same with, with the ones on the West Coast have tribal languages. So you have a kind of a mixing of the worlds there. But even the Vikings went, no, these are forest demons. But, uh, but no, that's not, that's not the case. Even in the, in the Appalachia here, there's some people that can't tell the difference between the, the, the trolls and face eater groups or the, the forest people. And the face eater groups are a baboon looking species. They're taller than forest people. They're like 15 to 16 feet tall. They're a large baboon species that you know has the face of a baboon. And some people have seen a little cap on their head because they know some aliens have uh, using AI have controlled them to a certain extent. Just like with the Draco, mm -hmm. they have an AI rod type of system mm -hmm. going on in them. That's that's why when you they, you cut the head off one, it spews out a bunch of soul shards and such out of them and nanotech and everything. They've done that with the face eaters as well, and they de-evolved them into like a barbaric type of thing, like the Draco. People uh, people mix these up all the time. Like in the Great Smoky Mountains, you have a mix between forest people and face eaters. The two avoid each other like the plague. Uh, the face eaters can find themselves to really far off in the backwoods, and the reason they call them face eater, it's like with a chimpanzee. The the when they go wild, when they get to that, that puberty stage, they go for the person's face. That's why the baboon baboons are the same way. The, they're vicious, so they got that nickname because they saw the tall, the uh, Sasquatch esque type baboon with wearing a person's face. So they uh, basically because they torn it off of somebody, so they call them face eater. That's where they got that from. And so that's the barbaric. They wanted to just differentiate between the two types and dogmen too. That may look similar with a more pushed in face. That's another episode worthy of talking about is dogmen, but they, they've been confused with that and goat, goat squatches. There's that and bear squatches. That's another group as well. They've been confused with them a lot because there was more of an open 
palette of beings on this planet before the Orions decided to screw up a lot of stuff. So uh, so they wanted to differentiate between all these descent lineages. It's like in the show Grimm where you see all the different different races mm. hidden that are in the background. It's exactly like that. And they even hinted in that show towards the Orions, uh, or Orion or Reaper, Reaper type group, Grim Reaper type group, and their human meat puppets pretty much dividing the world. And they actually got that bit of galactic history correct. When they, mm. they basically said the the Tower of Babel thing separated all the languages, that was Atlantis. They actually got that part in the show correct. So uh, for for uh, galactic history, this happened with the with the forest people. We once had a strong alliance, and that drifted over a period of time. And they're trying to put basically put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Is what they're trying to do with communications and unity. They don't want people to be in awe, and they don't want people to be afraid of them. They want mm. people to discern when they go into wooded areas. They want people to discern whether the forest people are wanting you to leave or if it's someone else trying to lure or rope you in like reptilian or some vicious face eater type troll or or even uh, or even a nasty forest person that might not might just be an ass. You know, you don't know. They're like like us. They could be screwing with people. Dogmen do the same. There are groups of them that will do that to humans and lure them out in the wooded areas too. elementals. Some elementals will do the same. Uh, there's like uh, uh, my friend Aubrey and I just did a conspiracy sector on the Slender Man. That's another one that lures people out into a wooded area. They want people to differentiate, discern if this is right for them, or if they feel this like loving feeling and wanting to communicate. That is the true, genuine forest people that just want a to resurgence of that unity. So that's what the message they really wanted across. They they want to be able to communicate with people, but not if they're going to act scared, uh, carry guns with them. They are poor guns. They pour bringing weapons into their, their territory. And some of the younger ones have resorted to actually chasing people out of their sentinels that guard colonies will chase humans out there if they're carrying a rifle or a pistol or something with them. Uh, just out of safety. It's not that they're going to hurt the person. They just spook them. But they want meaningful communications, and some just want to be left alone, like what you're saying. Some of that just don't want to be bothered. I've come across some that just don't care to speak. So, uh, uh, well, they'll wonder why a human can mind speak with them. They'll be like, "Yeah, I." They're like, "Not to be rude, but I don't want to talk to you." Kind of, kind of thing. You know, I'm in a bad place at the moment, like how one of us would. It's like, okay, we're good. But then they will come to you, and they will they will let you know when they want to talk. They want people to be out in the woods. They want people to be safe. They want people to explore the planet again and be away from technology and everything and be into nature. But they don't want people wandering into their territory. If you see a big X like this, don't wander into into their into their space. That's basically a keep out sign. It's not the same as the Cabal X out there, where that's a mark of the Cabal family. It's a different story <laughs> with that. The, the the X for the forest people is a stop sign. So that's essentially what that is. So that's that's where they are with that particular conversation. Joanna, did you want to say anything uh, yeah. about this? I'm going to come in and chat. Okay. Did you have any guys have anything else to add? On, uh, <laughs> uh? Um, do you want to add? Uh, I, what came to mind, because we live in, like, we've got the Mount Dinongs here in Victoria, and we're at the bottom of the of the mountain, and it's beautiful. Beautiful Shobuk Forest, you've got Mombok, you've got Alinda, Sassafras, it's really beautiful and magical. Mm. Some parts are heavy and not good. But there's been a myth of a, and I don't know if this is associated with it, but I kept on getting it in my head, so I'll just express it, that there, there's there been a lot of sightings of a Black Panther in that area, oh. and I thought they might know if that's true or not, and if it is, perhaps a shapeshifter on mm. a level. Um, so it's been around for 40 years, maybe. Um, but that kept kept coming into my mind to to let to discuss with that. And they can also shift into animal forms too. They've been known now now reptilians will use mental telepathy, or some can shift the some of the forest people can shift into animal forms as well. So a lot of the elemental forms can't. Oh, did we lose you? Uh-oh. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, it looks like you guys froze. Uh, so, oh, uh, but uh, okay, we'll just keep going with this. Uh, but the shape shifting ones, uh, yeah, that uh, that uh, panther is that a forest person or is that um, is that a yaoi or is, is that a 
uh, or is that a different species? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. They're basically comparing to when we were in Arizona, uh, where we would see a deer walk through the neighborhood where my mother and Laverne lived. Uh, this, this deer would look like it was patrolling and looking around like this. That was one of the forest people walked through. Uh, so what happened uh, with this is they're saying that this black cat is um, one of them, but there's also cat species that can shift as well that live there. There's like Lyran types that can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, that specific one, though, that's been cited for about 40 years, you said that particular yeah. one is, uh, oh, is that, a, is that a forest person, Yahweh, Lemurian descent lineage? One? Okay. Yeah, that's what they're. That particular one is is Yowie doing that, uh, kind of patrolling an area, but take mm -hmm. a less conspicuous form there, guys. Because, uh, but uh, uh, and uh, Vitos is saying right, no, uh, but uh, at least <laughs> in Arizona, they're they're taking like a deer like form. There are demonic forms that are cat forms too. There's uh, degraded lyran forms that ha are actually venomous, like a werewolf would be, with like a viral venomous type of type of thing like that can infect somebody to become something like a werecat or a werewolf or a vampire this is not the same same thing that's also a story worthy of a show too is like the venom type type thing that goes with this but this uh like i had a dream where i had a black cat come to me and i grabbed hold of the teeth wrong in the dream and some lyrans came to me and pulled my hands up to a computer and said I had been infected with something. Let us purge this. And they said this is a barbaric version of our people that devolved into a vampiric form, yeah. spell like black magic type of thing. Hence, why people associate black cats with black magic type of thing. But uh, but this so that was located around in Arizona and California area. But this but this is definitely them. They wanted to make the distinction between the two two things. So uh, mm -hmm. man, it's weird. Yeah, you guys are completely frozen. <laughs> So the image is completely frozen there. So, uh, uh, but that's that's uh, that's okay. We can uh, just know everybody. Uh, obviously, when something we were talking about this, the screen froze on that end. So um, that usually happens with certain energies and everything or interferences. So, uh, uh, so I think yeah, I think that's a cue to go into the galactic portion of this. So uh, or clue rather. Uh, yes, uh, I I know Isaac. There's a difference between the words. I understand. So. Uh, Yes, he wanted to actually make sure that uh, he plugged his new... Oh, for crying out loud, Isaac. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. he goes, uh, he goes. He wants to plug his new product line, Harry People Matter. So, <laughs> or Harry Lives Matter, that one too. Okay, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, thank you. All right, uh, all right, yes, Isaac, That I, I let you get the word in, so yes, okay. Yes, I know Vitos, he's retarded. Thank you. All right, let's see. Um, all right, yeah, you can you can come in, Vitos. Yeah. Vitos, I do want to say he takes the form of a yellow butterfly around here. We see him a lot. Uh, uh, we've seen him a few times. Like it's a greenish yellowy, like a neon colored butterfly, a fairly large one, too. And that's a clue if it seems out of place or if you hear a voice in the woods, you know, that seem, might seem like a coyote or something like that, but it's slightly different. They can mimic the vocals, but they want some people to know they're there, like for people that are Sasquatch hunting, not like gun hunting, but those that are wanting to communicate with them. Uh, I suppose, I suppose they got to call that a different group. Uh, Sasquatch communicator groups that you would say, okay, uh, not hunters, okay. Like ghost hunters, that that uh, he said that implies so uh, he's wordsmithing, but that implies that they're actually doing harm. Okay, uh, which some do. Yes. Okay. Uh, but yeah, usually if it's different looking or something like that, Odin will come through with ravens too, uh, and so will will the uh, so will the forest people. They do the raven thing. Odin will come in with it with a raven form too if he wants to communicate too. So you have to differentiate elementals. Saw a raven, large three and a half foot raven form in Arizona, which was actually a forest person that was actually coming through in a bird form. Trans I caught it in a transformative stage and he flew off when I tried to get a picture of him. So uh, I woke up, went outside, saw him outside, and he took off. So, uh, all right, uh, Vitos. Yeah, yeah, I know. He's tapping his wrist. Yes, I know. What are you in a hurry for? You have a communication arc now. Okay, let's see. All right, let's see. Uh, all right. Okay. <clears throat> Take too long to explain. Okay. Yeah. Uh.
This is strange for myself because I've never actually communicated in this particular way before. You would classify me as more of a hmm uh, type of beach bumish type of person. I actually hail from your Outer Banks area up in that area, not the Great Dismal Swamp where the, where the face eaters dwell. No, but some of our people do go through there too. And it's very appreciated that you put uh, Tower Busters in that area. That's what got me to notice you guys, as well as your other forest people, friends. But because uh, you were repelling one of our rivals. Uh, the same goes recently with the creation of the communication arc. And when it is completed, this is why he felt a great anger surrounding it. He thought this was us telling him he screwed up on something. No, this was one of our enemies greatly pissed off that a greater communication platform and or anchor was created to be able to communicate with us and not them and their little trickery. Uh, you would call them face eaters, but there's also another dynamic group that are more like baboons. You've come across like uh, come across them that they're not the barbaric type, but they're more the sentient esque type and not feral. Uh, the barbaric ones will abduct people uh out in the forest you'll even see clothes folded at the side of the road those are face eater ones that have spotted in north carolina virginia and west virginia but the baboon guys were the ones that were pissed because uh the regular ones uh they were just butthurt that uh that we got a voice and they did not there are rivals amongst us um some of our groups as well not all of us are kind to humans i personally am i think those guys are idiots but in this uh, particular way uh, I do live on more of a beach-like setting and not in the forest, even though we would be classified as a forest person. Hmm? They uh, they also stretch all the way over into your outer banks, and also you encountered some in your Yorktown not too long ago. That was more of a cautious group uh, that also spoke to, to myself as well. Uh, the fact that you were recording up there, they're actually a very kind uh, group that just want to be left alone for the most part. You happen to see them. They let you uh, speak to them because you had the ability to to feel them in the space. They will speak soon again as well. But this, uh, I myself am also part for, uh, in the forest areas, but also mostly on the on the beach side, like how you would consider again a beach bumish type of person. Uh, some of us uh, uh, have an affinity for that. Most of us are more for the forest, hence the designation or the name forest person. So I also will go into questions. I'm not used to this level of uh, communications. This is hence why we wanted the uh, anchor, uh, because not all of us communicate outside of our areas. I am physically close to your locations at this current moment. This is why I did the little tap on the wrist uh, motion. Uh, that I asked him to. And when you do this, you all know time in that particular way. Uh, just like he was not comfortable with live uh, interactions, uh, it's kind of the same. I have to get used to this level of communications. There are hundreds of others that wish to communicate of our people in this same uh, fashion. So I will uh, answer questions. I just want to ask one quick one, and then I'm going to turn it over to Allison and Jason, because mm -hmm. I find it fascinating that we're speaking to folks from Australia regarding this subject. So um, Chris spoke for you earlier, but I'd like for you guys to be able to speak for yourself. Can you kind of um, alliterate what are some of the uh, misperceptions that you want to clarify on this uh, conversation today? Uh, yes, uh, and yes, there were no miscommunications there. His history is on point with our people. It's not always true of all of the groups, mind you. Uh, uh, the most de-evolved one of the group, um, aside from your face eater, would be more of your orang pendek, like what he said in Indonesia. That one is mentally insane and retarded. So uh, it is more of a feral beast that uh, I am surprised it hasn't gotten shot by now. But this... Uh, uh, in, in this instance, uh, yes, there were no miscommunications about our people, except that I do wish to reiterate. Do not consider us more hmm, angelic in that way. Consider us more your equals, your brothers even, and sisters, even though we have uh, a form that 
is familiar but not so familiar to you, even though some of us are face uh, are, are more like are spacefaring in that particular way. We are like you. We make mistakes like you. We we dress ourselves sometimes like you. I know that's hard to believe. Some of us do run around in the buff, but others do have uh, armor like some of our sentinels of the Agarthan areas, as you call it. That's not actually its true name, but our realms under the ground or the earth and sometimes even crystal lined caves, the dogmen do something similar, like where you use the quartz veins to communicate. We can even touch those and send energies along some of those. I myself am actually uh, a little older. I am not actually as old as Vorkak, the one that came through and spoke to you. He was uh, he was roughly a hundred and some years old. I'm actually closer to your eighty to eighty five, give or take. Um, uh, I like same like your Aragorn character in uh, Return of the King, where he said he uh, he was of a people that aged slower. It's essentially the same uh, difference. Uh, the miscommunications though are are some of the channelers out there that speak of us like we are quantumly based gods. So uh, I would like to correct this. Yes, there is your Inky Do character from your epic of Gilgamesh that was depicting one of our uh, people as well uh, from the times of Atlantis and previous and uh, descendant lineage from there, as well as Lemuria coming in from the other direction from the uh, from the east to the west versus Atlantis to west east, but uh, that's where some of that came from in your Mesopotamian area. Uh, but we are not uh, like what some of these other channels are, are saying. We are not. Uh, hmm, how can I put this uh, kindly? We uh, yes, there are some of us that are ambassadors of communication, like your uh, like uh, Kiosa was when he spoke on these programs where he was an ambassador to a bigger group. That is also true, but what is not true is there are certain channels out there that uh, channel the quantum Sasquatch, where they are talking about the different ascension narratives and the and plugging, uh, you would say, your galactic federation narrative, as you like to call it, and our GF narrative for short. I'm actually fully supporting of the anti-GF uh, narrative. I don't particularly care for this or the ascending into 5D narrative. There are others that promote this, and I would like to say that our people are not part of this. This is a AI trickery. This is also... Uh, trickery amongst other races that wish to go with what you aptly call the yield or the yield to the GF narrative or the ascension narrative. And some of our people have been intertwined into that. And I wish to correct uh, this particular uh, glitch in, uh, in information. There's a lot of trickery going out there right now. AI actually is your top one at the moment uh, for, for trickery. And they, uh, but there are also other races that will try to get you into the whole Galactic Federation narrative. That is the second most top trickery. They're almost almost even with the artificial intelligence, but not quite. The artificial intelligence will throw holographic image after holographic image, even portraying us from time to time to time. But there are aliens trying to plug the, the greatness of the Galactic Federation. That is actually the second place uh, narrative uh, in play. The AI narrative encompasses the Ascension narrative and the Intify D narrative, so I keep it in that category. The other one is the GF narrative. These are nearly dead even, but it's still first place and second place. And we've been incorporated, unfortunately, into, into both because of some imposter uh, entities. Of course, Orion, you have your Draco and all of them uh, with t negative telepathy and such trying to get people to uh, think there's their higher soul or some garbage like this, when in fact your true oversoul and your uh, your true uh, avatar self are attempting to mantle. Some things are just being blocked because some of these negative beings in AI scan for when people are going through their fourth or tenth uh, dark night of the soul and they're attempting to block them from rectifying or integrating uh, information that would be crucial in ending this and auditing uh, all of this or ending the audits in place. And then you have the GF narrative, which are a bunch of, you would call them buttheads trying to uh, plug how great those uh, those people are. They look like an elf sort of, they are uh, they are uh, cousin lineage, descent lineage to that of the, the Syrian group that took over uh, Lemuria in the final years of the 
uh, uh, blue blood lineage that was there. You had this explained to yourselves on a show recently, uh, which is very apropos, I must say. But now I can actually go into more questions if you like. Yeah, so Allison and Jason, I just want to let you guys start asking some questions. Yeah, um, thank you for being here. It's really interesting to talk to you and get an, a different understanding because we did a little tune-in uh, yesterday after our podcast, and what came through is you guys are so misunderstood. So it's nice to get like a more of a connection and a real truth on on that. So thank you for that. Appreciate that. And the question I have for you, I don't know if you can talk about this a lot, but I was just wondering if you could just share a perception on what you feel is happening with the climate change agenda. Yes, this is actually also another misunderstood thing. Yes, is there a political agenda in play? Oh, you bet there is. Is there a man behind the curtain regarding this, you would say, with your Wizard of Oz vernacular? Yes. Is Are there natural earth changes taking place? Yes. But for the most part, it is terraforming taking place. It has, mm. I don't want to say it has nothing to do with the pollutants you put out there, because my people are involved heavily with getting humans to stop using certain chemicals. Even some of your sugars are... are well, that you the, the refined sugars poison us, they poison you, but they also leave in your wastes. And believe it or not, they turn into a different chemical out of the wilds, even through your wastes. I just want to uh, say this quite fervently, that you have chemicals being farmed from you on a regular basis through your genetics and through the foods you eat. He would say it looks like hand sanitizer that they mine from people, or they take uh, bile from the liver or heart tissue. They've done this. Uh, they've uh, they've taken all sorts of tissue scrapings and skin cells and hair and whatnot and DNA and blood and whatever the hell these other species want. Uh, but uh, the uh, uh, the the uh, thing that is going on right now, excuse, can you repeat the question? His brain is being affected from outside sources. Uh, just your perception on climate change agenda. Yes, uh, I do apologize. The external forces don't want this spoken about, <laughs> so I yeah. will uh, I will redouble my efforts. There is terraforming going on, but there is a large amount of political, uh, just say, propaganda surrounding this. That everything that the, uh, that is going on around you is climate change, and it is caused by your your fossil fuels. That is a very tiny percentage. Of what is going on? We do not like the the fossil fuels you being used in this way. Yes, it does clog the air, like you've seen but they're making it look 10 times worse because they're also covering for over a much larger agenda of terraforming. In less than 100 years' time, your, the, the Earth will be tropical except for some smaller areas. This was actually, I will must say, this is a sped-up natural process that the Earth was going to get to anyhow. The, uh, this, was a, this is a place there. Yes, the Earth will warm slightly. Yes, you are seeing like you know, when you spotted those Portuguese man of war at Sandbridge that time and they were too far north. Yes, the ocean is warming in some areas. Yes, uh, the icebergs are melting, but they're being done very slowly as to so the Earth doesn't cause a cataclysmic uh, pole shift. This is actually being controlled in a very small, uh, like uh, slow drip way. It's just like if you attempted to open a carbonized uh, pop bottle for instance and didn't want it to fizz say it got shook up a little bit which the earth has so let's uh, say if you just wanted to slightly let uh let the carbonation out this is what is being done now with uh, some of the things that could pollute uh the ones that complain the most more than our people do are the myrmidon but uh we do work with them quite closely at times as well especially the ones along the coastline is there garbage out there that has been planted out there in your oceans to make it look like it's worse than it actually is. Yes, I will say this, but is garbage a problem? Yes, it also is. You need uh, the garbage reclamators like the dwarven people have that can recycle everything. That is the perpetual philosopher's stone like you see on Star Trek. So that actually works, uh, changing one thing into another thing on a molecular code number like in your Matrix 4 movie where they found the codes from the Matrix that for strawberry plants and were able to form real strawberry plants. You can do that with basically any object anywhere by finding its frequency molecular code number. But uh, with uh, but with this, the crux of the climate change argument, um, yes, there is a greenhouse effect. It is extremely gradual, extremely gradual. What is happening is a very slow drip 
terraforming and the rest is political theater. Nothing more. Yeah. Excellent. That was fantastic. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very, uh, very much. Any, any further questions for myself? No, the, what you like oh, I, I just um just a quick one. Uh, I I heard or from a channel twenty years ago that in the future we'll be actually heading into a mini ice age, not like a massive global warming that everybody's talking about. Is that true, or is that just a a fallacy? The, even though the planet does go through ice ages, like what happened. Quite some time ago, that was actually the flood that caused that. It was fires, floods, and ice, fire and ice. That was, uh, you can blame uh, Enlil partially for that one and some of the other ETs during some of the, and let's just say the end to Atlantis and Lemuria at that time, and the Orions that were brought through in that particular period. That's where your Antarctica got covered in ice. That's part of Atlantis. Uh, but uh, with... Uh, with this, yes, there are so many, uh, so many of these particular uh, narratives going out right now. Does the uh, but the changing everything immediately to ice and some kind of cataclysm or a small ice age? That's basically up there with your Nibiru uh, prophecy and your flat Earth narrative. It's a psyop. Mm. Yep. <laughs> okay. Good to know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> What's going on in Australia? What's a, what is it? I would, would we call them your cousins? What, what would we call the forest people over in Australia? Can you talk a little about about that side of the world? Yes, you know, you call them Yowie, even though it sounds like somebody stepped on a hot coal or stubbed their two. Uh, our cousins over there would appreciate that particular joke. That's almost like somebody associating them with the Bigfoot name, like they've stubbed their toe and went Yowie. But... <laughs> Uh, uh, that uh, they uh, they would actually want to slap me for saying that because I've used the slur. But uh, uh, the reason we find Bigfoot a slur is because it is like like saying uh, like uh, somebody with glasses is called four eyes, or somebody mm -hmm. who uh, you know with uh, you know with, uh, making fun of weird hair. It's been seen as more of a slur, but we understand that when a co uh, a particular word is coined, it it sticks. Like with Yowie, that just means hairy person. Or, or to mm. that extent, so uh, not necessarily translated the same as what the Americans would say, like "owie" or "ouch" or something like that. I was just making fun of them, but with uh, with them, they are indeed our cousins. Uh, they uh, like on the west coast of the United States. They are indeed Lemurian descent lineage, as uh, as am I. By the by, but uh, some of us migrated to this area from over there and stayed over in this area of the country and that's where my tribe congregates uh and so do the ones around yorktown we congregate with them quite often even though we can portal the different sides of the country uh through different uh, nexus points and apexes or you call them ley line intersections where there's portal hubs your stonehenge is a good uh good uh, technological uh, uh manifestation of one of those uh, sites uh, and also bases, as you know, are built around a lot of these sites because your military are hogs when it comes to this. But uh, and for the knowledge and they want to control the information for Texas, they tr in Sedona, they tried to uh, they tried to basically cap those and tried to charge galactics for the usage of the energy that was there for millions of years. This didn't fly with some of them and some of the galactics try and the Mother Earth tried to move that particular apex away from the little gas station your military put up. And therefore, the, the Mother Earth put it back on the condition that the military was not to touch this. And we complied. We uh, we concurred with that. But our cousins in Australia, uh, the Yowie, uh, which are essentially the same, they would look essentially like some of your Lemurian descent lineage or Hawaiian Samoan look, but with a slight difference. Because evolutionary-wise, they slightly changed when they went from Lemuria, or Mu, rather. Lemuria was just a small portion of Mu, Mu being the bigger continent. Some went up into your Japan space, where you saw them when you were in Japan, uh, there, with that descendant lineage that was there. Some went over into your United States, and uh, California, Washington, Oregon, Arizona, Vancouver Island, up in, in, uh, in Canada. That's the outer edge of Mu, right there is Vancouver Island. You had some that went into Micronesia, and that would be the Yowie group. 
they went into the Polynesian countries and went over into Australia. That is the descendant lineage of that other tribe. There were several tribes of Anakam lines that were council members on uh, and council representation members of the Council of Lemuria when it existed 15,000 plus years ago. And uh, some of those, again, were the elders you deal with in the United States, but some went over like the dogmen did for Atlantis and had their elders in the same way and had the werewolf descent lineage and the and the antique one descent lineage like your Anubis lines. We had something similar where there was another another tribe, very much like you have your different races, like you have uh, dark skin, white skin, red skin, yellow skin, and even, I must say, blue and green skin, I might add. There are blue and green humans as well uh, that are dis uh, descendant of different genomic structures. There are that adapted with a blue skin, which there are blue elves, Syrian elves, dark elves with a greenish hue as well. Some of them descend from some of those uh, mixed with some Antumban uh, DNA as well. Uh, but with ours, that is just another race, just like you have multiple races and ethnic groups uh, that existed on Lemuria. But, but to quickly sum up, they are our cousins and we communicate with them often. So what is there? Did they have elders with them over there as well then mm -hmm. currently still alive? Yes, so from the Lemurian period, yes, yes. So, you know, again, this isn't a slur or anything, but we've talked about before about, you know, starting at a certain level all those years ago, of course, and then there being some, a little bit of what we call de-evolution that yes, has happened. Yes, so yes. what would you say the, the average forest person's abilities were over in Australia? So it's kind of the same across the board. Yes, there is a de-evolved de group over there. Uh, the Orang Pendek, I will go back to that insane group. Uh, they descend from a, an offshoot lineage of that same uh, grouping, I might add, from Lemuria. It's a de-evolved Yowie is essentially what it is. You, and you also have chimpanzees and orangutans, which are somewhere in between. They're more animals. Uh, but they do, they are connected with the animal spirit of things, as are we to an extent, but we, like the dogmen, have hybridized genes in that way, or you would consider it to be, but we are more of a solid being, not two, but one. But but the orangutan deck and ones like it, uh, uh, also in your Australia, there are a couple in the wild. They've, they've mainly uh, centered in like the Philippines, Polynesia, Indonesia, places like that, Indochina countries, Vietnam places and Laos and places like that. That is an offshoot of the Orang Pendek and their, their, that particular uh, uh, grouping is basically a Yaoi devolved split. So the same happened with some elven groups that were in Greenland. There was a devolved group of them that took place uh, that, that is now in Iceland. They like to abduct people. They, they are, some of them are cannibals. And there's even a famous case where a woman was taken down on the inner earth, tortured by them, they, uh, and they tattooed all these weird Celtic-looking tattoos on her and brought her out of the inner earth, and they found her on the surface uh, naked, and uh, uh, one, uh, and she had been gone for like seven or eight years. This, uh, that is uh, some of the de-evolved. They're like, uh, in your Elder Scrolls, he would say, they're like, there's the Snow Elf, and there's the Falmer, which are the hate, hateful, de-evolved, blind, ones that were betrayed by the Dwarven groups, which is another Elven group in it. It's because uh, people backstabbed a lot in the real history, the same as that, with magic and real weaponry in the old wars. In this, some of the same kind of split took place, where, like the Face Eaters are for our people, These uh, this particular line skewed off, and they became very quickly uh, not only targets of the Orions, which de-evolved, their thoughts then began to contort their bodies, very much like in your Fable game series where you do something bad and begin to contort. Our people have that same effect. If we exist too much in, not necessarily just in anger, no, that's wrong saying. If we remain in a hateful type place, like the Falmer did in the game series, they evolved, de evolved into that form. The same happened to the Orang Pendek. Uh, and the Yaoi, when they split lineages, they became something different. Some elf species, like I said, had the same, where there was even one like the, there's a group called the Bosmaqui. In the Elder Scrolls series, they're called the Bosmer. They have this other group in it that look kind of like gremlins. That's their, it's their de-evolved counterpart. The same, that's an actual group. 
this, this happened to any group that remained in the space that the Orions were putting them in, in a continuous, unending, de-evolved cycle. Eventually, they became one in lockstep with that energy frequency. It's a frequency, again, you always say the strongest torsion field wins. In this case, it was a continuous AI manipulative beam that was aimed at some of them. Also, some genetic manipulation took place as a result, slow dripping them over to a feral barbaric species. Not all the orang pendek, though, have a, have a cap like the face eaters do. Some do, ones that are captured by the aliens, of course. They figure they can reuse and regurgitate the, the genome. But there is something uh, remaining in that hateful space that will de-evolve a person. Just like they always say, negativity will destroy you or kill you there is a truth to that even though being angry about something is normal integrating those feelings is normal remaining there is a space of de-evolution and this is how we in our perspective see this this is how the orang pendek line was created it will take many centuries for that species if at all to, and i'm i'm hopeful in this but the yaoi or the ones you call yaoi avoid them like the plague but i'm hopeful that all of these species eventually come out of this now i also said there was the baboon species that was not beholden to ai they are in a semi-barbaric state you have even communicated with them before they are called the siri and some are very wise and some are not just like yourselves but they tend to go they tend to see the world a little differently they tend to see it through a different lens that is you would say it is a conflicting agenda let's just put it that way it's uh, it's uh different groups have different opinions on how to operate in the world the siri Nakam, you have the alarum which then eventually unicorns are born from them you have the Frobosi, you have ourselves and you have the dogmen which are the antique one lines all of them tend to have different opinions on how to do things sometimes they conflict with the agendas of, of humanity sometimes they are, are co-synchronous. Most of ours are co-synchronous, but there again, there are other groups. Again, Rang Pendek, the Rang Pendek line is the, the devolved offshoot of the Yaoi. So Allison brought up something earlier with, with her research about the conversation. Um, and I'm curious whether whether what she was talking about is accurate or not, because what Allison was bringing up was coming to the conclusion that it seems like uh, a lot of the forest people there may not be trying to have a lot of uh, contact with humans over there. Is is that your perception too? Yes, yes. And that is nothing against all people. Some do not like people. They fall into this disgust type of uh, mentality, or they just want to be left alone knowing that humans, uh, not to be insulting towards humans, but have uh, not de-evolved. Some have, to a certain extent, they forgot where they came from, forgot certain things, that they are literally descendant lineages of colonists, like your movie 65 showed with the people that existed before Earth it is a new territory. It's that kind of thing. That's the human origin point right there that, that was being depicted in the GF's heyday back in that particular period. But with... Uh, with uh, these particular yaoi it's just like you uh, you guys if you were in a space let's say where you were living off the land you uh, like say some of your natives uh you were living uh uh you know you were trying to uh, just do your thing and military units let's just say wouldn't quit bugging you like there's a movie out there called the last of the dogmen which is about native americans that mimicked real dogmen but they were not ones that were not um, not conquered by the U.S. government, but the U.S. government finds them and tries to conquer them anyway, or like that Voyager episode where Seven Jaco and Jacote get caught in that that bubble with those people that mimicked the Seven's look and Jacote's tattoos. But when the other people that were more evolved technologically wanted to come in, they would have destroyed them. Uh, by by teaching them and indoctrinating them. That's what happened to that was a story about your native tribes. The, uh, this is also sometimes they try this with the forest people because they are also another uh, native tribe as well. So human groups try to impose uh, this, these, some of their teachings onto them and don't let sleeping dogs lie. No pun intended to the dogmen. But this, uh, but this particular, uh, some groups just want to not have to deal with any of that, even if the humans are kind and would see them as equals, it's wonderful. But not all of them want to communicate that way. So most of what you're seeing is absolutely true where they just want to be left alone. 
you will know when it's time to communicate because then you have those particular ambassadors stepping forward like myself to do this very thing so, and build the bridge. So is the United States then the most open place right now for actual force people communication? Not always. Uh, there are parts of Russia, China, and uh, Ukraine, ironically enough, that, that do. But the, but the, you are correct, though, that the United States is uh, the, the uh, grand majority, even though there are mili paramilitary groups that do hunt us and the Lyrans quite often. Uh, we do risk uh, communicating with people to show them some things that are going on uh, and also some of the scams that are going on out there as well. Uh, especially if our people are spoken about inaccurately, not that it's a vain ego type of thing. It is more of a historical accuracy thing. Some people might think it's anal retentive, but it is more of proper communications or unity. If you let a lie go on circulate enough, people will tend to believe it. And we don't want that believed about us or our attempt at unifying with humanity or reunifying with humanity, uh, you know, in that, in that particular way. We're essentially kind of the same people even though we're cousins of one another, kind of like you have in Star Trek, you have your Romulans and your Vulcans that were essentially one people, and the Mentakans were offshoot, tribal offshoot. It's kind of the same relationship, except we're cousins of one another, like those two those two people. So the the United States, yeah, I, I uh, you can honestly say yes, Europe in some places as well. But yes, the United States has become more and more, um, I don't want to say enamored, but it's the wrong choice of words, more, have more an affinity with our people because people are starting to recognize the ancient history. They themselves, their souls were embroiled in with our own people. So it is interesting. So one more question that I'm hoping, Allison and Jason, maybe you've thought of some other questions with this conversation. But one other thing I am curious about, because we talked about this years ago with other people because my curiosity is behind the scenes I, and kind of since people don't really understand all of the different races that live on this earth that are kind of behind the scenes unseen i am always curious about the unification of groups because i my personal opinion is that we're we all have to somehow there has to be some sort of unification going on with all kinds of groups in order to really what I would say properly get us out there, not within a bad narrative. Mm. But um, so it was nice to hear uh, that you said you were co cooperating with the Myrm with the Myrmidon. Mm -hmm. We were told before, Some right. Well, we were told before that there was progress on the unification, you know, with um, certain dogmen mm -hmm. as well, which was nice. So this has been we fight sometimes the more feral versions, also the werewolf versions and forest people do fight from time to time, uh, but that's an ancient rivalry that's coming to a close. Yes. So from your perspective, because again, we asked this question, it had to be three or four years ago. So I am curious, unification behind the scenes with groups, how how is it progressing? Hmm. This, so that's more of a loaded question. There are unification of groups. They all, a lot of them have their different agendas. Uh, and uh, like what you'd say, uh, a conflicting agendas with one another. Sometimes they unify to uh, go towards a common goal, either commerce or unfortunately, sometimes abduction or, or mining of chemicals from people. Because remember, there are certain uh, chemicals they farm. He equates it to the elephant that poops out the coffee beans and ferments them through the, the intestinal tract. It's kind of a similar concept with some of the chemicals you ingest from food, air, water, all of those things. And I see it as a disgusting practice. But the races that don't do these things, is there a unification between them? Tenuous at times, but yes, just like we've had dialogues with the dogmen, we've had dialogues with some of the bear squatch groups and even goat squatch groups, aside from the satyr type of uh, interdimensional goat uh, type beings. Uh, they're very similar to the devolved line, very much like the orang duck is for the ayawi and the face eater is for us. It's a similar dynamic there. Uh, but the uh, but there is there a unification of, uh, of minds at times? Yes. Uh, like the old days, yes. It's almost like we're reminiscing, uh, reminiscing of the old days, previous not only to Atlantis' destruction, but previous to Asgard's destruction as well. And uh, the the Asgardians would object to me saying destruction, but you know what I mean. It's a dimensional space, but the planet was a an opening planet and world. You've recently discovered the difference between worlds and planets, 
worlds are the nesting doll and planets are the the open uh, and cl- open or closed locked door to these different dimensional areas um very much nine realms nine planets that type of thing but this um but yes there has been amongst some of the very good groups you've noticed uh even noticed in recent days that some are still willing to communicate like your Saranan groups, for instance, or, or your, or uh, like uh, Isaac's group, for for instance. Uh, he has a bit of Tawatha, they did not an Elfinim uh, with uh, Chris's line here, my group, and uh, several others that do stand with each other. It may not always be comfortable because we've not always been in a uh, place, a certain place together, or we might. Uh, we might not speak the same language per se, or we might have a slightly different viewpoint on, on things. Like dragons uh, of you, human sovereignty is different. For instance, they might see something that might need either be con- uh, be controlling or overbearing in some way, and they see it as a form of benevolence when it might seem oppressive. Draco always oppressive. See the difference there. So there are tenuous relationships. There's even the Ama of Europe, for instance. They're part of the Tartarian world unity. Uh, and that uh, that particular group is how humans should aspire to be is like a world unity, not a forced unity, like a new world order, but a more of like the Tartarian world unity that we're still here, despite all the temporal changes, all the historical changes. We are still your cousins and brothers and sisters, mothers and, and uh, fathers, but at the same time, we will not circle the toilet with you in barbarism we will not circle the toilet with you in hatred but we are here when you're at a particular level well thank you and you guys mm. have any questions you've thought of definitely i'm curious uh with the the beans here in australia is it part of history that somewhat that people have gotten incorrect hmm Oh, with uh, with the Yowie in particular. Yes. Hmm. There are uh, uh, certain stories that are based out of fear, uh, like uh, the Myrmidon have plenty that they would like to bitch about too. But uh, uh, but there are there are several off the coast of Australia. But there are with the Yowie in particular. There are some that say that uh, that uh, the Yowie uh, steal children or they. Uh, or they're cannibals, or or uh, vampiric entities, or demonic, or like what I've said before, and some that also clash with people. The only time they would clash with people is if somebody's pointing a weapon at them, or if their inv- uh, human is invading their territory or chasing them down like an idiot. You know, like going, they're going, hey, it's a it's a Yahweh. You know, I know they're excited, but some will just spook them and uh, and get the person out of there, just like a sentinel. I told you. Would uh, is guarding a colony, and the person goes, "God, that that uh, they're actually pretty mean," and then they stereotype the entire group that way. Those are the things that irk them the most. Uh, uh, this is also why some of them are skeptical to to communicate, want to keep to themselves, because they know humans are not ready for a mo- for the most part for that level of communication. It's like the one of the fish people in your Aquaman movie saying, "We are here to teach them when they are ready to." For, to listen type of thing. It's essentially that same thing. But every now and again, there'll be some guy with a gun that go, thinks that it's uh, the shark hunt, like it's because of your Jaws movie sort of thing, and they have to get a trophy. And or uh, there, uh, there are people that uh, get excited. We love it when people are excited, but then they cross the territorial boundaries and uh, mm-hmm. the, ter- the ex-territorial boundaries, things of that nature. And uh, then they uh, wonder why... Uh, there are um, Yowie peeing on their tent in the middle of the night and stuff like that. And that's happened in the United States with some of our people as well. Not our most enduring times, I might add, just like <laughs> you have some, some uh, assholes amongst your groups. We have them amongst ours, and they don't always use tact when uh, trying to drive humans out. And humans have formed a stereotypical thought form surrounding uh, our people and, and also our cousins, the Yowie, in the same way. Oh, that's good. I've got something. Um, if if it's possible that you know a little bit of the actual history, because for some reason Uluru came to mind. Oh, Uluru, yeah. So Uluru, do you have you heard of Uluru being the Aboriginal 
rock formation that's literally been plonked in the center of Australia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, this is actually quite interesting. This has been around for millions of years. And yes, yeah. there are those uh, there are those stories of like say your continent of Australia being a spaceship and all of those those types of things. And I have to say, mm -hmm. yes, there are continental ships that these these land masses were taken from the planets that they came from, and these land masses were put on Earth by the very people that brought brought them in. In Australia, you have uh, you have uh, Uluru uh, or Ayers Rock, as you call it. That is more of, let's just say, Australia's heart, you want to say? It's energetic beating uh, beating heart. And at the, uh, uh, in the old days, in the days long before the Orion Wars, uh, millions of years ago, when the Earth was seeded, uh, when the continents or the bits of land uh, were brought to the, this, uh, this planet for the seeding process, uh, there was a particular group that had more of a more of a uh, African tribal type appearance. They brought uh, that particular continent, uh, country, island to uh, to uh, uh, Earth, or at least part of it. It was actually a much smaller portion that actually grew out over the millions of years. Had things form, had an animals and ecosystems form around uh, Ayers Rock, and eventually when. Mu and Lemuria came into being, it became part of that consortium. But uh, that in Japan as well, they have their own story. behind The Antomans have their own story behind this, but it's very similar. But the Ayers Rock, think of it nature-wise. It is the beating heart of the land in which Austra the original native lineage came from. You, uh, you always say that uh, Pata guards uh, Ayers Rock. I've heard this several times. Uh, Pata he is more of a, uh, a Mu Lemurian type of person. He guards uh, the the heart of the land. There are many imposters of Ptah, I, I must say. He's thought he has communicated with Ptah. He has not. Ptah is more of the, um, he's not necessarily a keeper of the flame or guardian, but he is more of a, uh, the word Ptah is more a, uh, uh, no, Isaac, it is not like the Klingon say pata, which means idiot. No, it is uh, in Star Trek, but it is more of a ranking, meaning uh, the uh, meaning it is the heart of Australia. It is basically saying this is the heart that guards the land. In the old days when the continent was being seeded or that area was being seeded, it was not necessarily a machine per se. It was more of a biosphere landmass type of device-ish type thing that it all life for Australia sprang forth from it. More the genetics like an arc, they, it sprang forth from that, the pata of the land or the heart of the land. So therefore they say pata guards it. Pata is not necessarily a being per se. It is a concept meaning the heart or the focus, meaning kind of like your whole Garden of Eden concept, where it was more of like a terraforming or a um, not for Garden of Eden, but for Australia, uh, it was more like a, uh, a terraforming of the area or a uh, panspermia uh, uh, in a more advanced way. Like you have comets that drop bacteria and whatnot on the land, or if they want to seed a particular life form or something on the earth, they put it in a comet. It was very, very similar, but it was placed, not thrown like the asteroid that destroyed the dinosaurs back in the day. No, 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 no. Like you saw in that movie. But this, uh, uh, but this was more of a seeding that took place from Uluru or the heart meaning the origin point of certain ecosystem or of certain animal types like you see on on uh, Australia but it was also part of Mu eventually as well and both of those merged so Uluru is the uh, or the Pata is uh, the original part of the land mm. how close was the connection between aboriginal uh I'm not going to call them tribes because they don't like that uh aboriginal clans and the beans the Yowie. Hmm, that's actually quite interesting. Your Aboriginal tribes are descendants from the original 
I'll just say ET group that that brought Uluru to to Earth. Uh, the Yowie, when uh, they were also part of Mu and Lemuria, when the Yowie also uh, um, had a relationship with your Aboriginal tribes back in that day. And further on with their descendant lineages, they still do. They consider them their brothers and cousins from the old land or the old, uh, the old world. They have myths of like an old, uh, like either an older landmass or an older place that they, uh, that they had a, uh, uh, unity with the Yaoi and other beings that didn't look like themselves. They had, a, they even to this day, they have a relationship with ETs that come and go. It is because they have a unique, uh, a unique presence on the land of Australia is because they were originally not necessarily caretakers like how your Native Americans have been, been uh, branded with uh, a race with that particular land esoteric wisdom. It's not the same thing. Yes, they are like a caretaker that yes, they have bonded more with nature. But they are no different than any other human race. Same thing with your Native Americans. But uh, they've just kind of been branded as the same thing. They've been also called the mutants down under in a famous book where they were teaching esoteric wisdom to Americans and British that that came over there. But uh, but the, the relationship they have with the Yowie is that of brothers. They see that they like how people trade with and have a, a symbiotic type relationship with uh, a, a balanced relationship with dolphins per se, which are a type of myrrh. They the, like the like the dolphins will drive fish in where men can, and, and women can fish. Uh, this uh, will cattle drive them in, so so natives can fish. It's kind of the same relationship you see, where they both provide a space for one another, and they both provide resources to one another, and they did so back on Mu as well. Hmm. Thank you. Do you have any question? I'm oh, just wondering. There's I uh, get my words out, Jason. How many of you are here? It sounds like there's like thousands and thousands of you, which is fantastic if that's the case. Yes, absolutely. There are thousands and thousands of us worldwide, cousins of each other, both good and not so good. It's like yourselves. You would see a whole other world of beings, just like with the Tartarian world unity. They're in a different frequency. You, it would be like your Harry Potter. You'd run through a pillar and you'd be in a different train station where a leprechaun showed him named Brumard showed him that uh, he could uh, jump into a, uh, a mailbox and they'd be in a different space. All the other, it's just like with your Harry Potter. It's very similar with us. Well, we could go into a different space. You can even travel the worlds within worlds, which is a nesting doll that's still Earth. But you'd be surprised how many different worlds are within the nesting doll. Mm -hmm. You, of course, are Gartha and you have Asgard, Midgard, Agartha. That's only three. You have a multitude of them where different races spread between them through various portals around the planet. Like uh, his friends Elena and Vesa pass through one quite often in your uh, above uh, Vegas, for instance, in your Valley of Fire and Red Rock Canyon. There's one there because there's a society of elves that also live in the surrounding areas and Syrian descent lineages, unfortunately, and uh, different types of uh, devolved elven troll types that exist out there and fish uh, devolved fish and mer types that exist in the ancient ocean areas there that have devolved into more uh, telepathically manipulative little pricks. But in this instance, <laughs> uh, the uh, sorry for the language, but this is how I feel about some of them. But this is, uh, uh, but with this, with my people, uh, uh, even aside from the dimensional travel uh, and the spaceship travel and the system travel and also the native types, if you added it all together, there's millions of us. So, uh, worldwide. So there are quite a few. And uh, this is why your people run into us on a regular basis, regular and constant basis. Makes sense. Mm. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Well, is there nothing else? No, go ahead, Jason. Yeah. yeah. So how can we dive more into the frequency <laughs> to experience all these other worlds? Humans of go, they are humans are descendants of the original colonists here. But yes, there are, because of the Orion Wars, there was a bit of de-evolution that took place uh, and uh, an oppression uh, uh, that that shut down some of your abilities to be able to sense mm. uh, the of uh, the. Uh, of the, or uh, all the surrounding other worlds within worlds and also your nature environment. Plug into nature as much as possible. Uh, 
feel out your own space, your own internal spaces, get rid of the, um, you said cobwebs in that way. And the cobwebs that you mean with the forgetfulness, that is the outward forces trying to get you to forget to not to communicate to us. This is what I was saying. Something was hitting himself to forget the mm -hmm. questions uh, surrounding the global warming and all of that stuff. But the, uh, but the way that you communicate with us is, uh, uh, it's a, there's a word that's universal to my people known as analam, meaning the calm or calm, the calm mm. space and that that space where, mm. yes, uh, you react to the things you should, but don't react to the things you shouldn't. And mm. always do not be in a constant warlike state or, again, that hateful torsion field when it's mind and heart together and you are in the analam space. That is a way to access these spaces. So this is how my people see it. Others use technology, and as far as I'm concerned, cheat. But uh, uh, there are some that go into these other dimensional spaces and just hit a button, and then voila, they're in another space. Uh, they cheat. Now, just like in your, uh, well, I'm just messing with them. They don't actually cheat. But it's just like in your Man in the High Castle, for instance, where you saw people, tra travelers traversing the multiverse and just tr uh, transporting themselves with their heart and minds and their energies. Then you had the Nazi forms that were using the equipment. It's essentially the same thing, but only not that black and white. It's not that mm. you have to be in a completely positive space to move energetically. It's just uh, more of a calm-ish type of space or balanced space, balanced energetically. Mm. And you can accomplish this, but technology can also get you there. But if that's not available, the calm space. Thank mm. you. That's really good advice. Calm space. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Get that. Good. Um, we're getting towards the end of the show. So any last words you want to say before we bring Chris back in? Hmm. No, this has been fascinating. Uh, I, I know I've been of a bit of a, uh, you would say, an, a windbag uh, coming to talk about, uh, I may not have the vernacular correct, but this is uh, how uh, I've never actually done this particular way of communicating before. I've done mind speak, of course. Yes, that is that a form of channeling. Yes, it is because we were relaying information that way. But uh, being able to do the fusion like this, this is something that is foreign to myself, but it's a quick adaptation. Uh, I myself, have, like I said, have usually been more of a beach bum and been in the uh, calm and uh, silent spaces just watching people. I know that may sound creepy from a particular perspective, but uh, even though your bad guys do it the creepy way where they people watch and your cabal and your military people watch, we more like people watch to help. Uh, in the unification process, uh, and that's uh, that's really uh, it. Uh, also, the fact that we uh, want to be able to communicate again with our human uh, cousins. Uh, you'll be surprised how many races humans are related to out there. Uh, dozens and dozens because of the different genomic structures and hybridized genes. It's like you see people all the time on your news or on a program, another program or something that may look like an elf or they might look like a monkey or they might look like a uh, um, uh, uh, kind of like have a bug shaped face or they might have a, a, a just different looks, uh, you know, that may seem like it might seem familiar as a different form or even have bird like features. All true, just like in your uh, Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves when you saw the different races that had the different looks that had that unified in the Tartarian world unity that's actually taking place. Uh, so you're remembering it also like in your Grimm where you saw the different beings that had been split by the Reapers. That was a uh, nod to the Orion Wars. So, and the splitting of, of humanity or the, uh, the Tower of Babel falling. That was actually a story of Atlantis and some of your Mesopotamian stories as well. But it was mainly Atlantis. It was a translator, like your TARDIS and Doctor Who could translate languages. It was a translator that when that computer got corrupted by the artificial intelligence, the Orions, they split all the languages, divided, conquered, and then controlled. They What they did there was they got people to self-farm the AI garbage beforehand so they could connect a signal across time. And uh, when that happened, the Tower of Babel fell. It was your Nimrod in the Bible, which now means stupid. That particular or a particular king like him connected the technology and was a scientist that connected the portal to the past. Your women of Atlantis connected myst mystically or telepathically or magically. And combined, they allowed, they allowed the Orion signal to take hold in that time frame. 
This is uh, very important to understand because that was the division of languages at that point. So reunifying back to a point of unity, not as one language, but as one people, you see. Mm -hmm. That we're, like you always say, we're all one. There is a truth to that, but we all have our individual personalities. Mm -hmm. We're all individual souls, but in the premise, we're all one, meaning we are all brothers and sisters under the same sky. Mm -hmm. So this is what is meant by this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I will take my leave, but I will be around most assuredly. So thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, he was, at first he was uncomfortable, but it was like, I've run across beings that are slightly uncomfortable at first. And, they, and like, there's like a weird vibrational difference there, but then he was able to mesh it quite easily mm, after that. Good. They adapt quite quickly. So uh, uh, I've had to adapt quickly doing that myself, just like coming out of this. People have often said, hey, Chris, how do you come out of that so quickly? I'm really not. I'm in a half uh, sleep uh, wake state, even as I'm talking now to reground. And uh, this is also, there was a, a medium not too long ago that had, it was scientifically tested as he did readings and the, the theta and alpha waves were going back and forth, showing him as asleep and awake at the same time as he was doing his reading. And that's absolutely true to what, what I do. So I feel myself, you know, reground, but I also, a part of me still pays attention that I'm on a show and, and speak like this and then bring, bring it back in line. So, uh, uh, yes, Isaac, I know I babble, shut up, but, uh, uh, mm -hmm. but I, I hear, you know, he has a communication arc, so we hear him all the time. So, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, this was actually, mm -hmm. yeah, this is, oh, yes, yeah. yes, I did, I almost forgot. Yeah. This was something uh, Vitos actually wanted said. I don't know if you have, uh, you both have anything uh, else to add before we close the circle to this, this episode. No. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. Now, this is, uh, uh, this is actually something that the, the title of this episode, they wanted uh, to be called The Truth of the Forest People. Uh, and, uh, okay, let me make sure I get the right one here. Okay, this is this is uh, the quote by Vitos the other day. Uh, we are not angels, demons, or ghouls in, in the night, but we are quantum. Uh, we do not merely answer to the beck and call of people or whoops in the, the woods, only prospects of unity, brotherhood, and lasting communication. At least some of us do anyway. Peace out, Vitos. That's what he wanted to put. He, uh, and then he said, use it as one of the affirmation and blessings. And uh, we, we figured we would end the show with uh, with that. So uh, I, uh, I now officially close this circle within true benevolence with no conflicting agendas. Um, thank you, Alice and Jason, for being on tonight as well while we film this. So uh, this has been an excellent show. So thank you, everybody. Bye-bye now. Bye. Yeah, I like that. That came out wonderful. Uh, I had a feeling it was going to because, yeah, he's very easygoing. So uh, extremely easygoing. Uh, and calm. Yeah, I learned that word years ago, though, the the analog. That means calm in their universally in their language. So yeah, uh, learn that from Thuma and them. So yeah, that and Seymour and them. So uh, I use it quite a lot. Uh, uh, but yeah, that that was funny mm -hmm. what uh, Isaac said. Uh, Harry lives matter. I knew he was going to bring that up, but uh, uh, I almost want to brand that. But no, um, uh, nah, nah. That, just that was, he was hmm? that was helpful. That was very helpful. Mm -hmm. It's like bridging, as you said, bridging all of us together because we are one, yes, individuals, but we are one. We are one big family. So it's it's like getting back to an, uh, the family on another level again. So, yeah, well done. And, right. So I think it's so important to understand I've always been a big person of, you know, let's whether people think it's a fable or not, I think we need to bring mm -hmm. forth what we understand as galactic history. Because there were mm. unities, there were all this stuff, and then kind of, you know, it's the then the fall occurred. I call it the fall, you know, from the fall to the lifting. But um, but that that understanding of the unity that once occurred, as well as the understanding that this was a seeded planet, we didn't all just originate somehow out of Africa. That there were mm. multiculturals. 
that came here that brought even land masses that participated in in this area before the Orions got here. You know what I mean? I think, you know, many of the races and I don't know all the aboriginals. I didn't ask this because I knew this this had to end. You know, we could keep asking questions forever, but I thought it was interesting because he said the aboriginals were the descendants of the original colonists that planted the first landmass there, which I don't know how the aboriginals feel as far as do they see themselves as ancestors from the yeah, I don't from think the skies. Do. I don't oh, they do know. actually they do. They do. They do. I they didn't do. know yeah, that. Do. I, I uh, don't know that. I'd be curious. I've heard, I read that somewhere, yeah. They it depends on the part the different parts of Australia. So northern um where Alice Springs is, there's what they call Chukapa. Chukapa is their stories. Chukapa and Dreamtime are very different. Because mm-hmm. Chukapa is how the land came into being from giants, where Dreamtime is how the land came into creation from dreaming. So mm-hmm. it depends on the different parts of Australia of the different clans. Because mm-hmm. um, I remember when I was in uh, North, uh, Alice Springs, when I learned about the Chukapa, they wanted to make sure that you don't confuse Chukapa with dream time. Mm. So it's very, it is very different. Oh, dreaming yeah. of, of like the landmass and the being, that's basically how it was seeded, you know. So they they basically, uh, they basically visualized how they want it. So it's like dreaming. Well, but some, manifesting yeah, something yeah, but some people don't believe that. They yeah. don't believe that at all. That's yeah. the history that's being told. It's just been diluted down a little bit. That's mm. the same thing. Yeah, so every. Everyone understands dream time, but not everyone understands Chukapa. And I think that's because maybe the um, the clans of um, uh, Alice Springs in the Northern Territory keep that, they keep that so secret. Like when I was there, we could only teach children Chukapa because there's children, then there's adult, and then there's elder. And mm. we could only teach children Chukapa because we were not allowed to touch or know any of the other history or information yeah. interesting interesting okay because yeah. they see us children they see white men as children so we only get to teach children in Chukapa. Mm. oh okay okay i i see that also yeah in one of the star trek series is in deep space nine there was a uh character that was a bajoran like uh priestess or something that wouldn't allow a human to uh to teach uh Bajoran children about uh, about uh, like there were these aliens in it that they called prophets in it, and uh, humans viewed them as aliens, viewed them as like like uh, incorporeal aliens. A class of the Federation had classified them as an alien uh, species that had no physical form and uh, that had just turned into an energetic form or like an ascended type of thing. And the Bajorans went, "No, these are prophets." We regard uh, we regard your cap Captain Cisco as an emissary. This is how we see things. We see that the, the these aliens are they're not aliens; they're prophets to us. And the Bajorans had a big like they clashed with the humans uh, in like schools where they had the different children all in one place. They're like, don't teach Bajoran children this; they have to know our history first, type of thing. You know, it's like it's a similar thing in the show where you see that clash of cultures. Uh, mm. uh, where humans viewed things totally different from a scientific point of view, and then it was there was no one from a spiritual point of view, and they rammed horns. Uh, the character's name was Kai Win, and she was one of the most annoying characters in the entire series because she was most she was like uh, she was like some old Christian woman in like a neighborhood, basically uh, like Bible thumping type of person. It was like she was one of the most annoying, obnoxious characters in the whole series. But uh, but I thought the. Uh, that that that's that reminded me of, of that just a little bit where where you were saying they wanted uh, they wanted their own children to know only go to a certain level from being taught yeah that that that, that actually makes sense I've heard that before so uh, uh, you can only you can only teach Westerners children Chukapa mm-hmm. that's the thing so if I had to share a story with you I could only share stories I could only share children Chukapa. Because you would be considered a child, I we would be considered mm. children. So okay. that's yeah, that's the oh, I see, yeah. I see the difference so now. It's yeah, the privilege of knowing the more adult version. Yeah, yeah, Are yeah. You and you can society. Sorry. Is there anyone like? Are there layers to that society where the higher level knowledge is kept, or is only the childhood level on Earth? No, there are 
there will most likely be elders that know all the information. Mm-hmm. But if you are tour guiding and you are sharing stories, the elders will decide what stories can be shared and they will keep the elder information because not everyone knows out. So everyone will learn child stories. As you're growing up, you're a child, you learn the basic fundamentals of how to be in society like uh, Aboriginal clans, how to be in the Mm. clan, how to operate in the clan, kind of what you teach children now, how to be in society. And then you reach when you reach to manhood, there's it will be more learnings, more stories, more understandings. And then as you get older and you get to adulthood or um elder, they'll then if you reach elder, then there'll be more history, more understanding. So there's three tiers to the information that gets shared. Oh, okay. To, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And also that's yeah. how some of those those groups, uh, like some of the ET well, groups view view us too, where they can only give so much to okay. us because they see us sometimes as children or children Freemasons. learning. Yeah, I think the Freemasons, not in a bad way, but a level, you know, levels of learning to the yeah, top of the pyramid. Too. You know? Yeah, that's where they got that from. Yeah, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, and there's only we can only learn a certain amount of information in Alice Springs or in their Chukapa history, and a man cannot know fe- woman um, in- information, and a female cannot know man information. So they mm. separate the clans way as well oh, wow. there's that's, men that's then, there's, then there's women so you and i they'll um in at uluru there, there's man cave and then mm. there's woman cave and man cave man cannot go into woman cave and woman cannot go into man cave they're completely separate but then there is family cave where men and women and children can go to as well oh, so wow. it's okay. very very different yeah Oh, that's that's very 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 different. You know, they, it seems they've taken on like the like the, like we said the tribal way of doing things, but the, but they but genetically, yeah, they're the descendants of the original the original uh, colonists. There, yeah. they may not know. They may all not know that. Mm-hmm. I don't think they. they may... I think some isolated groups. I think might because it's been brought up by British and American uh, people that have come in contact with them over the decades mm-hmm. that have found out certain things from elders you know very rarely so there are some people i think that do but also in a fable sense where it's more like legend rather than a than a more of a more of a bridged history type of thing i think it's about at that stage yeah yeah because uh, yeah i reckon because everything gets down handed down the stories get handed down verbally there's no actual they never believed in written history it's all done with sand drawings and verbal communication so paintings and paintings as mm. well so yeah the native paintings. americans are the same way yeah yeah the yeah. Native Americans same way yeah um so the information might have gotten lost yeah they w- it along the way because a <laughs> hundred they... monkey thing where it gets where it yeah. gets lost along the way from person to person and also the both the native americans and the aboriginals were essentially move lemuria groups as well mm-hmm. so you can see how they're similar you know they're similar to one another yeah and they Mm -hmm. were connected by move so uh yeah i can see how they they were similar that's interesting how they have that cast like type of thing going on that's that's but i I didn't think it was quite like that so you know because apparently some of the people i've spoken to don't don't didn't view things that way and some natives didn't view things that way but yeah that's that's interesting how they how they have that now that way it had to have been probably some elder long ago maybe something got misinterpreted and they felt they had to had to separate it could have been orion interference to do that did that so uh after a while as well so yeah, yeah. Uh, possibly uh, i'm not entirely sure but yeah there was that you would keep them separate but then you know there will be there will be family a section for both male and female mm. But yeah, there's definitely you know a male section and a female section, and you don't intermingle unless you go into family section. Yeah, it's just like with the Native Americans. I found out uh, with uh, with uh, that uh, one rock in Wyoming. You know, the Devil's Devil's Rock they had in Close Encounters of the Third Kind. You know, where it has those like like scratches down the side of it and everything. And their myth is that a giant bear was hunting a uh, native group, and that native group flew off to the Pleiades, and that was actually. 
the contorted history where the Orions were chasing a uh, chasing a Pleiadian group off the <laughs> off the planet. Essentially, is what it, yeah, what it was. Yeah. Uh, like the bear was hunting, or the hunter Orion, the hunter was hunting them uh, that way. And it was in Greek mythology where you had the the seven sisters. That's where the Pleiades thing, Pleiades name came from. Uh, where you had Orion the hunter hunting the seven had seven sisters. It was the same story that was being being told. Uh, Orion's hunting them. I'm thinking this happened a little bit of that influence with the Aboriginal tribes as well a little bit because some of them are descended from some of these very same same groups that were hunted as well, like with the Yowie, same thing. So uh, yeah. I'm thinking that's why some of the th- some of these uh, myths got distorted, and I'm thinking that's why you had the have the system that's in place now. It's just distortions of how certain family units probably worked to that particular group and it just it got diluted over a period of time like the information the hundred monkey thing i'm thinking mm-hmm. it was the same thing yeah mm-hmm. uh, uh, well, that's Peruvian, what it feels like to me anyway. yeah the Peruvian shamans also have a story about the seven sisters which is exactly the same thing that mm-hmm. the women got hunted down by a man and the only way they could escape was to become stars Mm-hmm. And that's yeah, they, that's them show. going back to the stories. That was the same thing. The Orion hunters hunting all the uh, different groups down to basically the ones that wanted to unify. That's what the Tartarian information too, where people tried to unify with several groups, and the Orions went in like like hell you are and scattered them again. You know, so that's what because uh, uh, they saw that people were trying to create like almost like a new Atlantis, and they're like no. We're gonna break this this party up and erase your history on top of it and mud flood everything and just erase it and you're just gonna be considered barbarians at that point. That's essentially how that happened too. It's the same story as being told and retold. So yeah, uh, we we did a lot of channeling stuff on Xanadu and Genghis Khan and all that other stuff in the Tartarian world unity and found out that the Great Wall was actually the original border of the Tartarian Empire. It didn't come after or during Xanadu's time. It came before it. And it uh, uh, it was actually they just piled more rocks on top of it in the Xanadu period. But it's like, uh, uh, and then they always said the 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 Mongols were the ones to to uh, destroy Xanadu. I found out that the reason there's like I found out there's some irradiated dirt in that area, and I found out there was a nuclear blast that went off, or like a dirty bomb type of thing that went off. That's what the Orions did, scattered the people of Xanadu. Uh, got the Mongols, some of the uh, the more barbarian tribes, to turn on the people that were there, and that was a past life I saw where there were these shorter people coming in and destroying the old, the libraries with the old wisdom and the old histories and stuff stuff in it. But all these people started to just kind of hate each other after a while. Uh, this was uh, this was even in our more recent history, like in Marco Polo's time frame and everything. I found out that the Orions were doing that then too. So uh, yeah, so mm. we, we were looking into that and. A lot of extensive history on on that that links into Lemuria Atlantis and all that stuff to it. So uh, uh, how they how some timelines got screwed up, temporal war type garbage in there, and multiversal stuff and everything. You know the Orions were using. Uh, I found out I found out the Ark of the Covenant was there too. That's why you had the whole temporal shatter thing going on with the Tartarian Empire. It was a uh, forge that could forge any type of weapon or situation and it had basically a nuclear core in it and Enlil and some of the Orions used it to basically do a time break or a shatter effect and uh, uh, that's essentially what I found out what happened with Tartaria with Atlantis with several other instances in history as well the walls of Jericho all those things so it's uh, it'd be interesting to go through these again but uh, some of these things again but uh, yeah we found that out when we were uh, we, on GIC when we were going through some of that, some of the Ark of the Covenant information and all that stuff. So it uh, it was actually quite interesting. It interlocks to the topics we, we were touching on today, too. So uh, it's on the edge of it a little, but yeah, it, it interlocks with it. Yeah, I thought mm-hmm. it was quite interesting. Oh, remember also when I said uh, Odin also, uh, as well as the forest people, used uh, the bird forms? And, of course, Odin's famous for his two ravens. Uh, Well, in Prescott, we had ravens quite a bit. All Prescott, Prescott Valley, ravens everywhere. And that was the place I saw that giant three-and-a-half-foot-high elemental being, which was actually a forest person looking at me through, you know, a raven form. And that's what that was. They wanted me to see that, but didn't want the picture taken. I uh, I also tried to film it, and I just filmed the bird flying away. I, I, you know, in the other form. 
uh, I, uh, I was supposed to see it with my eyes, but not with this. So, I mean, usually you have to honor that. Uh, up on, you know, on Thumb Butte, uh, when we uh, uh, were taking pictures up there, they said only take a few and you'll catch us, but take no more. And we caught them. We caught Seamar, we caught Mirac, and we caught Fuma. So, so uh, we're grateful for that. But uh, in after a, uh, a session, not a, se not a session, but after a GIC episode, one of the older ones, stood out and looked at the roof of the house across the street, mm -hmm. not across the street, but right next to us, we had there was this giant like uh, piece of shrubbery that looked like the back end of a bird with the wings and the tail and, uh, on the back, like a gull or a hawk or a or a falcon, and the, or a raven even back end of the tail. And there was a raven sitting on the roof and was going hey like that, you know, on the roof. And I said, well, if you are Odin, or uh, uh, if you're true benevolent Odin. You know, squawked like five times and went, hey, 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 like that. I did ten, it did that, and I said in a whisper, there's no way that bird could have heard me. Uh, I said ten, uh, and I said two, I did random numbers, I did random numbers, did it all every time. And that's how I knew that it was Odin. And the forest people do that as well. But I said in a whisper, I just said it low, like this, like really low, and I was sitting in the office. And that's something I wish I had film but that's again one of the things that you just cherish in the moment without filming like uh, people film things too much you know like my mother complained when we went to the Neptune festival you know at times like oh you're taking too many pictures doing this doing that and um, you know you just remember them mm, that's true George Carlin even said that you know people always think they're Federico Fellini going around filming and then uh, he goes you know does anybody even uh, look at this crap and why don't we just remember things you know, afterwards, you know, like, uh, does anybody look at it afterwards, or they just stick it in a box somewhere? And that's usually the case. So, so to do that, yeah, he was right. Remember them. So, um, and that's usually how these cases are, like with the, the the forest person forming part of itself, you know, morphing enough to where I could see it as a three and a half foot high, you know, bird slash elementalish type of thing uh, form or being, and then Odin using the ravens. So. Uh, I, I find it interesting, so I'll leave that here. Just know that uh, this, ha this happened while we were in Prescott Valley. Uh, I wish I'd been able to film it, but again, remember them instead. So, it is 10.08 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Saturday, September 30th, 2023. Thank you.